we already diverted some of the oil history. So, you know, oil production goes back a long time uh, in this area. Um, some production here, we, we are more on the, uh, the transfer end here. The production was mostly out in the Central Valley more. Um, and then the oil was brought here. You drove up along the oil pipes that are still on the pier. Um, 15,000 linear feet of pipeline on the pier. So the pier is long. It's uh, <laughs> about uh, 0.6 miles long, about a kilometer long out here. And deep enough where tankers could come in right here. Uh, we're about 40 feet deep. Tankers could come in on this side of the pier and load or unload oil product. So it went all over the place. Um, it went over, a lot of it went to Japan for processing. Um, and then it was, you know, sent away, crude, unloaded, refined here and moved moved around. Um, and that was, that went on until uh, 1995 was the last time a tanker came in. Uh, a couple things went on. Uh, inland oil fields were not producing the amount that they were. Uh, there's other ways of moving the oil more safely uh, by pipeline and uh, yeah and then this, this, the potential environmental risk was was always looming too so so 95 was the last time an oil tanker came in and a lot of the other transfer stations this is called a transfer station Morro Bay was a transfer station for a different oil company um, there's a number of them up and down the coast um, they all just kind of faded away um, I don't know all their timelines but uh, I think this was one of the last ones in 95. Um, so then what to do with it? Here's this big facility, it sat there. Um, they tried to sell it, but trying to repurpose this for, for a business purpose just didn't work out. How were you gonna put the cars? What are you gonna do out here? How are you gonna get people back and forth? So that didn't work out. So then they were faced with, uh, Coastal Commission was uh, mandating that they remove the structure entirely which is, you know, can be part of the permitting uh, process um, and return the seafloor to its natural state. Well, that was gonna be hugely expensive. They didn't wanna do that. And so then that's when negotiations started with Cal Poly. And in 2002, uh, we accepted uh, ownership of the pier. We still don't own the parking lot because that's still contaminated with oil. If you dig down this far, you're gonna get into that duck, uh, oily sand, uh, mixture that was all over uh, in Avila and still exists under the sand out to the end of the Avila Pier. Um, and uh, so we don't own the parking lot. We have a license to use it, but uh, we don't want to own it until it's remediated or, or cleaned up. Um, so then uh, we took ownership. Um, they gave us a small endowment, about $3 million, which is nowhere big enough. I really wish I would have been in the room back then. <laughs> and insisted it was at least 10 to 15. We'd be, we'd be, that would have helped a lot. Um, but uh, uh, the endowment in the pier, and then I came on board um, in the spring of 2002. So I've been here longer than most of you guys have been. <laughs> so, yeah. <laughs> um, so when I came on, it was, you know, literally sort of a, a semi-abandoned industrial facility. It hadn't been used for over seven years and uh, um, it was all the birds on the western flyway all the gulls and everything pel pelicans and stuff figured out this was a great place to sit so it was, it was just totally whitewashed and so a lot of my first months involved putting up a lot of wires everywhere and a lot of washing and all that then we uh, immediately started on a grant process to fund the seawater building here we were successful in that and, uh, and then started building up our programs, started bringing classes. Uh, now we've built up to um, we have five, five boats that we run. We only have two here at the moment. One is in the class up in Laurel Bay right now. Uh, we have another on, on campus for maintenance. Um, so five vessels, we run a scientific boating program. Um, Jason Felton, who is running the boat right now, um, is our diving safety officer. He teaches a scientific diving class so we can train divers to work do university-based work um, and then we have the pier itself here we can do put things over the side we have a net station uh, where we can uh, uh, monitor local conditions where we have a, a sampling device where we're sampling uh, see, uh, the ocean conditions around the clock um, temperature salinity plankton so I thought I'd just walk around and show you all that stuff and uh, yeah, I'd answer any questions, any questions so far. 
How, how many users? So you guys just had your public uh, yeah. public day. How many how many visitors? You yeah. non university visitors a year? Right, right. So we, we annually uh, we hadn't been able to offer it since 2019 due to due to COVID, but uh, we finally just this past Saturday we uh, we offered our um, what is typically an annual open house event. It's five hours where all of the students. Um, that are working on a project are here presenting, talking to the public about what they're doing. We had about 25 uh, presentations uh, going on that day. At least that's how many tables I had to haul in. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, it was pretty impressive. We had um, 1,500 people come in that five hours. Um, our record is 2,100, but you know, we, since we haven't done it for a while, we we're just getting the word out again. So. Um, we were perfectly happy with 1,500. That's a lot of people, and uh, and yeah, it was really successful. Um, yeah, and it's it's just really interesting. There's just a, a real thirst for knowledge about the marine environment. Um, people live here. Um, they're close to the ocean in most a lot of cases, but they just don't know enough about a lot about it. There isn't a lot of ways to access it. Because they're not maybe going out on boats, and there there just isn't a lot of way of, of for them to obtain. Um, um, education, especially about local uh, things going on right here. So that was that. I think that's what, in part what makes the event so popular. They could come and talk and learn about, you know, what's the rockfish populations right here off our coast. What are the currents like, you know, in this bay? What are the plankton communities like in this bay? Um, what's going on with the Morro Bay estuary? What? How's the how's the um, the eelgrass restoration going? Um, so all of that type of work. Um, the Cal Poly is involved in uh, is, is things that we present and in, in to the public and it's, and it's the other really important part of that is the students presenting that data. It's not the faculty or me there you know talking at the public. It's the students um, talking and, and I find that it's I can just see it happen. The, the communication is, is wide open uh, where you know faculty sometimes it's you know more of a top-down type uh, talk and uh, there might be a little resistance um, there but um, uh, but with students there's just it's, it's very the reception is wide open and it seems that there's a lot of communication back and forth and good discussion and so yeah it's it's a, a real positive event I think for, for everybody so, yeah and that's also right that's part of the Re Coastal Commission requirement for public access so you guys meet your public mm -hmm. access yeah. Uh, requirement is, uh, yeah we had to that's, that's part of our public public access plan or the, the coastal development permit that we currently hold um, for, for the pier. Yeah. So, right. Um, then other other numbers, we do about uh, probably about 2,000 uh, Cal Poly students in, in Cuesta College, uh, uh, Channel Islands are the, are the main ones that come um, for, for lab classes like this. And then uh, we do probably even I haven't counted again recently, but probably 2,500 to 3,000 uh, visits, student-based visits like Haley here. Um, Haley's one of our grad students and, and two new undergrads um, that are working on their, their rockfish set up there. Um, so about, uh, you know, two to 3,000 uh, students are coming out here to assist with research. So this is labs they've gotten involved with and they're coming out to feed animals, clean tanks, um, uh, do whatever's needed uh, to maintain that, that work. Yeah. So, yeah, so that's the great thing. Our students get very involved in all these projects. Um, and uh, in, certainly all our marine science students are involved in one or two or three labs. And, uh, and then folks from other departments or other concentrations within biology uh, also are part of that. There's no restriction as far as what department you're from. If you're interested and want to get involved, you can almost always find a spot. So, yeah. So, really good. Well, this steel and unlike your wooden pilings which are just bound, uh, pounded into sand until they don't go anymore um, these were actually drilled into bedrock and then cemented in place 
So everything is cemented to bedrock. And so our, what's called our vertical load is virtually full. We can put almost any mass 